previously on MasterChef Legends. <laughs> Welcome to the incredible MasterChef kitchen. The search for America's next MasterChef began. This is MasterChef Legends. Every week, we are bringing in the biggest names in the industry. Please welcome Emerald Legacy. That's my idol. Have fun. Cook from the heart. Only 15 of you will earn an apron. Yeehaw! Just like at home. And with the help of our first legendary guest. I like it. I think you deliver. I don't know if I want another bite or hug you. <laughs> Unfortunately, the dish completely missed today. We awarded just six coveted white aprons. Wow, perfect medium rare. It's the best dish I've tasted all night. This here yes, chef. is food of love. Mom, Dad, I got the white apron. Tonight, the MasterChef auditions continue. Two no's and you're out of this door with no apron. With another culinary legend. For the very first time, Curtis Stone. <laughs> Poor judges. Your execution was perfect. Excellent dish, no negative comments. You've got heart, finesse, passion, I can taste that. One chance. That is one of the worst dishes that I've ever tasted. For me, I'm sorry, it's a no. To earn one of the few remaining white aprons and a prize position. I think you've nailed it. In the final 15. The level that they're cooking at already, you guys are in for one hell yeah. of a season. This is a big day. Take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nothing compares to this game right now. This is like a big freaking deal. The MasterChef auditions continue. I cannot wait to get an apron today. As the next round of home cooks get ready for the cook of their lives. Oh my God. <laughs> Welcome back to the MasterChef Legends audition for everybody. Now, just by being here, you decided to follow your dreams, which has to be the most important step of all. Some of you will prove that you deserve a shot at the title, the trophy, and a cool quarter million dollars. Yeah! Now, this season, there are only 15 aprons to give out. We've already given out six, so there are just nine aprons left and two nights of auditions still left to go. It's a tough one. Tonight, we continue this season of Legends with another iconic guest. This legend is a wonder from Down Under. He is a Michelin star winning chef. He and I both trained in the legendary kitchen of the infamous Marco Pierre White. He's written numerous best-selling cookbooks, and this chef has become Hollywood's king of meat. All of you, please welcome Curtis Stone. Stone, I am so excited that he's here. This chef has a Michelin starred restaurant. He's a legend, and I cannot wait to present for him. So good to see you. Good to see you, man. And welcome to the most incredible kitchen. I can't think of a better legend to kick off tonight's auditions. Congratulations on that Michelin star. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Now, tell us, how did this journey begin with food? I started cooking when I was a kid with my mum and then my grannies. Then I did my apprenticeship when I was 18 years old. I uh, moved to London because of Marco Pierre White. I read his book and I got obsessed and uh, I got on a plane and went and knocked on the back door hoping to get a job and here I am. Your food is simple, delicious and the ingredients speak volumes. What are you going to be looking for tonight? Look, I think what's important is to make sure that the flavours are really streamlined. You know, you don't want to overcomplicate a plate. You want to make sure everything's seasoned really perfectly and some authenticity. It's got to mean something to you and we'll taste the difference, that's for sure. All of you tonight will have 45 minutes to cook us your exceptional signature dishes. And if you want that apron, give us everything you've got on that plate. And don't forget, you need to convince three of us four that you are worthy of a white apron. 
here to help you through those audition jitters. We have last year's winner, the lovely Dorian. Our finalists from last year, we have Sarah and of course, Nick. Welcome back. Nick, one of the youngest competitors, uh, one piece of advice from your experience across this journey, what would it be? Uh, be creative and last five minutes, remain calm. Uh, you'll get a little shaky, but make sure you leave time for plating and just put it all down on that plate. Thank you. You three, please make your way down here. You guys cooking, good luck. Gents, should we get our pallets ready? Do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Curtis, welcome. So Thanks, glad bro. you're here, bud. I'm Sweet. excited, you guys. We have been very selective this year. We only have nine aprons left and two nights to give out those nine aprons. The quality has to be super high. Yeah, yeah, fingers no, crossed. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to taste it. All right, your 45 minutes starts now. Little New York City with a little Alabama sway. Come on, Mish. This is it, girl. I am representing Miami, Florida. I'm bringing the heat to LA and to Master yes. Chef Kitchen. That Latin flavor, baby. Yes. 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 So My name is Anne. I'm 39 years old. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm a small business owner. I have a very supportive husband with two amazing little boys who are funny and naughty at the same time. And I love them so much. They're six and they're nine. Those nice. boys, we're so proud of their mama. Uh -huh. You're going to rock it. I'm following a dream. And I am here at Master Chef, and I'm going to get that apron. There you go, Ian. Yeah. 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 Let's go. My biggest inspiration in the kitchen is always going to be my father. Growing up, my dad taught me everything I know about cooking. That's the way that we bonded. Um, unfortunately, my dad did pass away from early onset dementia. And this is why I'm here. This is a dream becoming a reality. And life happens once, and once you're gone, you're gone. You don't get another shot. I know that now. And so I'm taking this step to do something that I've always wanted to do. And also, I'm doing this for my dad. How are you? Hello. What a pleasure. Uh, likewise, first name? Anne. And good to see you, Curtis. I can't look at either of you. Why? What's happened? I mean, my whole life, I've waited to meet you. Uh, you are my legend. And Curtis, <laughs> well, I've, met, I've seen you, too. But right. <laughs> this is a dream come true. And I'm going to get an apron today. Uh, well, fingers crossed. Tell us yes. about the dish. What are you doing? So what I'm doing is duck a la cherry. It's difficult, right? Yeah. Yes. It's a yes, very difficult Yes, but you know what? Listen, cook. I'm going to be the next master chef. Right, this confidence I love. <laughs> How are you intending to cook the duck? Are you going to cook it medium rare? Do you have? I'm going to go 140 degrees, juicy wow. on the inside, nice pink color going through. And crispy skin? Crisp oh, yeah. This oh, passion of food, where does it come from? My mom made really good reservations, and my dad made everything else. <laughs> so, true story, true story. <laughs> love that. And so, my love and my passion really is from my dad, and I'm doing this for him. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Good luck. Yeah. Duck is, you know, a beautiful dish, but easy to mess up. Yes, I'm nervous. 20 seconds. Right. You got this, you got this. But this is a season of legends, and that's the only way I'm going to win, is by taking these risks. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. This dish is so important because it represents my family. I know my dad is with me today, and I pray that I did enough to get that apron for him. Hello, welcome. Hi. Can you tell us your name, where you're from? Yes. And the title of your dish? My name is Ann Hicks. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I made you a duck a la cherry with smashed potatoes and bok choy. Why is this dish so significant to you? I lost my dad four years ago to early onset dementia. My dad loved anything fatty. And we didn't have a ton of money growing up. So to him, duck was wonderful. Let's go. So is there sauce that you want to finish? Yes, sir. There's only one thing that really matters here, is when I cut that duck breast in half, how is the fat rendered, and what's it cooked like? That will make or break the dish, quite frankly, so. Man. Does that look right? Looks perfect. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Does cook beautifully, really beautifully. Big issue here with the undercooked bok choy. It's raw, so this whole stem, mm -hmm. it's a mess. Oh, I'm sorry. I tell you what, if one of my line cooks put up a piece of duck like that, I'd be very, very happy with them. Mm. Good job. It's a big compliment. There's times when a dish has such a compelling element that's done well. 
and makes you overlook some of the imperfections. The cooking of a duck is that good. I think I disagree with you guys. The duck for me is overcooked. The bok choy tastes like dirty water, quite frankly. Um, tonight, you need to convince three of us um, for an apron. Tough call. Curtis, because you've executed that duck just how I like it, I'm going to give you a yes. You cook from a very sweet and tender place. I just think it needs to be backed up with some professional technique. And I'm excited to see you go on that journey. So I'm going to say yes. Bless you. Oh, my gosh. It's two. You know, it's, it's a tough year because we have 15 aprons. Perhaps if it were last season and I had 20 aprons to give, I'd give one. This year, it's no. Sorry. Gordon? Two yeses and a no puts me in a tough position. Um... Two yeses and a no puts me in a tough position. Um... You do have an apron. Congratulations. Come over here. Let's get this on you. Oh, my God. Up. Great job. Well done. You deserve it. Here we go. Here we go. I just got my apron. <laughs> Joe might have given me a no right now, but I guarantee by the end of this, he's going to say, what was I thinking? So that's seven aprons down, eight to go. I've got to say, so far, the standard is very high. It's the MasterChef legend, so there's a high bar to get over in order to get their hands on that apron. <laughs> you got this. You cook this in your sleep. I do, I do, I do. I'm going to do a ginger right in there and my turmeric. I'm done with you. I can't wait to meet Gordon and show him what is the real Mexican food, right? There you go. <laughs> most excited to cook for is Curtis. Curtis. Hands down, the most amazing, iconic chef I can ever think about looking up to. So the fact that Curtis is here today is making me a little shaky. Tell us about you, the dish, and why are you doing this dish? Um, well, my name is Britt. I am a model from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Grace. And I'm doing Thai mahi curry because it reminds me of home. Nice. Why Asian flavors? Do you love Asian food? I just do. I feel like it's really like nice, light, and healthy, but also packs a lot of flavor. Can't wait to see it. Good luck. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Got the steady hands. Yeah, just make sure you see those mahi chunks on top. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. What I'm for. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Today I made for you Thai mahi curry. And the love of food comes from where? I grew up with no family recipes. I was raised off McDonald's and frozen food. So I taught myself how to cook. Good for you. Please tell me you made a fresh paste with ginger, garlic, galangal, lemongrass. I did not, but I added fresh ginger to it. Right. You used the paste? Mm-hmm. And what's the cream? Is it coconut cream? It's coconut milk. Coconut milk. I quite like the spice level. I think that's really quite pleasant. I'm just a little bummed that it was out of a jar. Yeah. When you take coconut milk and you flavor it with a paste, it's more like a curry milkshake. This is MasterChef Legends' 11th season. I just expected a little bit more, quite frankly. I feel like really confident in what I did with the green mole. I know that the pork is right. I know that the sauce is perfect. I am here for a reason. It's my time. It's my moment. Hello. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry, guys. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Oh my goodness, how are you guys? <laughs> take, take a breath, pull yourself together. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> well, hello. Uh, my name is Bernardo, and I cook today a uh, green mole with white rice and caramelized onions. <laughs> so what kind of protein did you use in the green mole? I use pork loin. The pumpkin seeds that you use, I feel like maybe you put a little too much, um, maybe just a little overbearing for me. 
when you shred meat, it's with fat as well at the same time, which gives it that texture. Doing it with a pork tenderloin, there's no fat in there, so it's the wrong cut of pork in that. Listen, these are the legends of American cuisine, and I think I can speak for all of us when I say that this is not the level we're looking for. Oh, man. Oh. 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 It's okay. I love you so much. Oh. I love you. It's all good. I'm just going to call it like it is. That is one of the worst dishes that I've ever tasted. That was terrible. Terrible. That was terrible. Here we go. I'm doing my rendition of a Brazilian taco. I'm ready to get this apron. This apron is mine. My name is Josie. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Atlanta, and I'm a senior IT tech. I love my job. I work for an awesome company, but it's just not me. And I decided that cooking is my passion, and you have to be willing to channel that. So I'm excited to meet Aaron Sanchez in 2007. My roommate, she put on the TV. He was there. Oh, Ever yeah. since then, I followed him. So I'm very excited to meet him. And like, I, I, oh, wow, this is like a dream come true. You have a black girl making a taco, so it's definitely a lot of pressure, especially with Chef Aron Sanchez. But I think if you're not willing to go all in, then why are we here? Go big or go home. And as we can see, I like to go big. So let's get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air. My name is Josie. I'm 30. Those are Brazilian tacos. Wow. And what's the day job? I am a senior IT tech, but let's trade out. I'd rather get in here. This is where my heart lies. And who inspired you to get into cooking? Aron is the reason why I got he, into cooking. He inspired you to get into he cooking? He did. I just love his swag. Ah, <laughs> I love. there you go, baby. <laughs> I love it. Should we have a closer look, gents? Let's try it. Sure. Tacos, um, amazing. What's the heat in there? Uh, you have some jalapenos in there. Um, I also pickled and kind of candied the, the jalapenos and the onions. I've got a lot of heat in mine, uh, which I love. What it needs is more protein. Be generous with that protein. But the big issue with the tortilla is that it's a little bit pasty. It tasted like the shell was raw. Tastes like a raw pancake. Yeah, I've got raw the, flour. It, it was stuck to the roof of my mouth. Mm. But the, the heat, I love. Oh. It has resulted in it just feeling like a little too dense. But I did think there was a really nice balance of flavor. Love the meat. Love the salsa. The onions are a little aggressive. Next time, put a little bit of lime juice and salt on those red onions and let them sit so it takes off some of that abrasiveness. Some of the flavors are good, but you missed the mark on a couple of the really important things. I love your spirit. I love your energy. But it's a no for tonight. Curtis? It just wasn't quite right. So for me, I'm sorry to know. Sadly, two no's. Unfortunately, that's where it ends. Aron, what did you think? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say yes to. I'm going to say yes to opening my doors at the restaurant so you can come and cook with me. And because Atlanta is really close to New Orleans, right? Yes. So you can come over there and visit with me. Absolutely. And then I'll be able to work with you and develop that skill with my chefs and everybody in New Orleans. I think that will benefit you a lot. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. You know, I think there's always going to be disappointment if you don't get the apron. But I get the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with Chef Aron. You know, that, I mean, just. Priceless. Priceless. Curtis Stone is here. That's and crazy. I am just absolutely in awe. These guys are extremely lucky to have these legends be able to taste their food. Normally in the auditions, you're already stressed enough. Right. You're not looking for that extra sort of set of eyes to like be <laughs> right. pushing on you and everything. So right. it's a really tough time to throw legends into the mix here. Got it. Yes, it is. Ooh, wicked knife skills. I want to eat this. My name's Abe. I'm 22 years old, and I'm a student. I'm currently going to NYU. I'm actually studying food studies. But my real passion is when I'm in that kitchen, and I'm cooking, and now just having the opportunity to cook for these famous judges who will taste the food is just 
It's amazing. Hello, how, how are you doing? Good, 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 good. What's your name? Abe. What are you cooking? A pico de gallo with a red snapper, avocado puree, and some deep fried tostadas, basically. Wow, so you're gonna bring some Mexican flavors for me in particular, right? I'm sure, with, with, with a little bit of a French fusion. The competition is here intense. Do you have what it takes? I think I can bring different things that I've learned over the years. All right, well, we look forward to it. Thanks, thank man. You, Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Hey, those are beautiful. Hey, those are fantastic. My mom's a diplomat, so because of that, every two to three years, we'd go to a different country, which was awesome. That's where I think the love of cooking sort of started. Everywhere I went, I would be in the kitchen helping the grandma out. Growing up, I lived in Mexico, Romania, and now I'm living in New York City. And I think all those different cultures have really influenced the person I am today. Beautiful. Finishing touches? Yeah. Just a little bit of cheese on top. Awesome. Going on the fish? Yeah, a little bit on the right fish, it, too. Right I always love cheese with fish. Slow down a little bit. Make sure it doesn't get on the sides. You're good. Come on, Five, four, three, two, one. So walking in, feeling a little bit nervous, but also excited to see what they think. This tasting is going to affect the rest of my life. Tell us your name and tell us what you've cooked for us. My name's Abe, and here we have a red snapper with an avocado puree and then a deep fried tostado pico de gallo and just topped off with a little Mexican cheese. Where are you from? I used to live in Serbia and Romania and Portugal and London, actually, for a few years. You're a citizen of the world. Exactly, yes. Excellent. What do you season the fish with? Uh, salt and pepper, chef. Any citrus there? Uh, no. All the citrus is in the pico de gallo and the avocado puree. So I thought that would be enough, especially if it's sat on the avocado puree. Fish is cooked beautifully. Pico de delicious. Not 100% certain of the cheese, doesn't need that. Okay. But seasoned beautifully. I like it. Thank you. I think the fish is cooked really nicely. The pico de gallo is seasoned really well. It's beautifully balanced. I thought it was wonderful. Thank you. I'm confused why you would put cheese on it to sort of nullify the crispiness of, of that skin. So that's sure. a little confusing. And frying flour tortillas, that's not something you really do. You fry corn tortillas. Right. It's because that's going to be saturated with oil. The big pitfall with you potentially will be mixing all these influences from your travels and your upbringing and then not having a clear focus with your food. I disagree. I like the dish. It has acid, it has fresh, it has fish. It's just missing that umami, like that next thing that says, like, wow, I'm not in college in a dorm eating a piece of fish that I sauteed in a pan. I'm eating a dish that's complex and evocative. We have two more nice auditions to go in this toughest season yet. Only eight aprons up for grabs. Two no's, and you're out of this door with no apron. Hold on, yes or no, please. There's a lot of conceptual elements of this dish that just don't jive with me. Yeah. So for me, it's going to be a no. Uh, Joe. I want to see more. I'll say yes. Thank you. Curtis, your job as a cook is always to bring together the elements that make a dish sing. And I don't think they matched up well. I think they matched up brilliantly. So that's a yes from me. Thank you. Your fate and apron is in the hands of Mr. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. And even though I got that no from Arone, I feel like I just want to even push myself and try to impress him even more now and prove to him that I actually belong here. Guys, that's the eighth apron we've given out. Only seven left. I don't think the level has ever been this high. Super high. We got to be really careful. My name is Joseph Maglikmott. I'm 32 years old. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm an environmental engineer. A million years to graduate college to become an engineer, and I want Master Chef cooking fish. I can't shake my desire to cook. This is my passion. This is what I'm meant to do. 
My food dream is to win MasterChef, open up restaurants nationwide, worldwide, just take it as far as it can go. This is like a great opportunity for me to represent like my culture. Yeah, Philippines. So this is Houston, this is Filipino, this is Southeast Asia, this is all of it. That's 15 minutes gone? Yep. Does oh, that you blow your you mind? It. You got it, Joe. I'm not worried. Good evening. Good hey. morning. Pleasure to meet you. How are you? Very nice to meet nice you. It's an honor. First Joseph. Time. Joseph, tell us what you're cooking and why. I am cooking a ginger green onion steamed fish in a soy sauce rice wine ginger sauce. That dish is simple, so it's got a Deliver on that wow factor. Make sure you got all those components right, that balance. Tell me what fish it is again. Red snapper. You're not worried about it, because steaming fish is a delicate, it's dangerous very, very thing to do so. in a competition. Be careful. It's the season of legends. Tough competition, 15 aprons only. Okay. Yeah, good luck, young man. Thank we'll see you, you in the restaurant. Much. Thank you very much. Wow, tough one. Yeah. After hearing all these comments from the judges, I'm nervous inside. I'm dying inside. My ass is on the line. This dish needs to be perfect. What's time looking like? You're at 30 seconds. That fish looks good. I'm really praying that it's not overcooked. Go, Joseph! This is the most important moment of my 32-year life. All right. All right, make room, make room. Woo! If they don't like this dish, my entire plan for my future is gone down the drain. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, look at that concentration. Very concentrated. <laughs> You look like a bad guy in a James Bond movie, bro. <laughs> like, you know? Why don't you tell us about the dish? My dish is a ginger green onion steamed red snapper in a soy sauce rice wine sweet sauce with a Southeast Asian herb salad. And this dish means the world to me, and that's why I really wanted to make it for you guys. This year is severe. Why this year for you? I'm an environmental engineer. It's a meaningful job. It's just... This is my passion. I think it's time to taste it. Yeah, Let's taste it. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Visually, I think it's sophisticated and elegant. But there's two things on the plate. There's the fish and the greens. That is it. So fingers crossed. Mm. Yeah, Shall sure we? Does. If it's properly cooked, it'll just peel right off. Oh, that's going enough. Absolutely. Tell me about this salad. It's a Vietnamese herb, rau ram, cilantro, basil, julienne, green onions. Joseph, I think you took a really big risk here because it's a very, very simple dish. And you're relying 100% on your execution being perfect. The good news is your execution was perfect. I think people take for granted how hard it is to steam a fish. It can go sideways on you quick. And I think the fact that you're able to do that with such skill shows a lot. It's beautiful. I mean, really beautiful. It just oozes confidence, and I think that's the magical sort of ace card you've got up your sleeve. You're calm, you're very cool, but you cook with such poise, and I can taste it. Good job. Thank you. What you have here for me is a trifecta. Perfect fish, perfect sauce, perfect salad, excellent dish, no negative comments. Thanks. Bravo. I still don't know if this is real. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> what this means is that I'm good enough to compete with the best in the world, and this is just the beginning. Oh my God! <laughs> Curtis, what do you think of the level? I mean, I can't believe that these guys are amateur cooks. The, the level that they're cooking at already, you guys are in for one hell yeah. of a season. Six aprons left. Our own, six aprons. <laughs> are you ready? Thank you, Joe. Are you ready for the future? <laughs> yes, it looks very bright. 
Beautiful. Love that. Jeez. All these ingredients are gonna come together. I'm doing what makes Jamisha happy, and cooking makes me happy, so it just feels so good. I'm so honored. <laughs> Do you need more cauliflower? I think we're good. A little bit more. That's fine. Go, Neha. Go, Neha. Go. My name is Neha, and I'm a high school student from Greenville, South Carolina. Salt or pepper, Dala? I learned how to cook like any child born in the 2000s from like Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. I'm making gobi manchurian, one of my favorite Pakistani dishes. Our family is a little bit more adventurous. So we make like Pakistani, Chinese kind of fusion food together. So this is a battered fried cauliflower with an Indian Chinese spice sauce over a better fried rice. This dish speaks to my culture. I use those bold flavors. It's a big risk for me because I'm taking a break from my education to pursue this culinary endeavor. Look at that color. I'm only 18, but I don't want to hesitate when it comes to chasing after my dreams. Don't worry, I'll fix it. A couple little last details to do. Seven, six, five, four, three, Hopefully two, good. one. Ah! <laughs> if I keep waiting for like that right time, that right time might never come, and it might not ever exist. <laughs> good evening. Hello. How are you, young lady? I'm good. My dish is gobi manchurian. Cauliflower in like an Indian spice batter, fried, and made like an Indo-Chinese sauce over a better fried rice. How, how old are you? I'm 18. I'm still a high school student. I put school on hold to pursue MasterChef right now. Shall we, guys? Shall we go and have a look? <sighs> wow, you've elevated it in terms of giving the gobi uh, finesse, right? Now, I've eaten a lot of that, and it's never been served like that. So, what's the sauce? Um, the sauce is a soy sauce. Traditionally, this dish doesn't have soy sauce in it. No. Not in Pakistan. No, not in Pakistan. No. So why soy sauce? I also love East Asian flavors. I think it's so cool how they're so bold, yet so balanced. That's exactly why I try to execute on the dish right there. Curtis, what do you think? I love the way you use the cauliflower as really the star of this dish. Mm. I think it's nicely fried. To me, it gets a little confusing when I'm tasting that strong note of soy and I'm thinking Chinese dish, but then I'm also eating the fried cauliflower and I'm thinking, you know, something more rooted in India or Pakistan. And it doesn't come together as a perfectly cohesive dish for me. But I do like some of the elements of it for sure. Pardon? I think you're developing a flavor and your understanding of food and develop this young an age is really something that's admirable. And I think it's something special. I just think when it comes to this competition, MasterChef Legends, 15 aprons, this dish, I think it's a little immature. Okay. It's a little bit unfocused, mm. but it's tasty. The frying technique is, is delicious, and there's a lot to like. So, like, I want to eat it. I'm going to keep on eating it because I like <laughs> it. So, I, you know, I'm just going with my, my gut right now. Right, a young lady, 18 years of age. Wow. Um, three yeses to get your hands on that apron. Joe, yes or no, please? Because I like this dish so much, and because I think it shows such great potential, I'm going to say yes to an apron. Curtis? I think it's really close. I really do. But there's some elements on the plate that work, and there's some that just don't. I've got to judge it based on what you've put in front of us. And today it's a no. But I know that in life, for you, it's going to be a yes. Young lady, I love your attitudes and that level of ambition. I just personally feel that you're not ready for it. And why aren't you ready for it? The soy sauce. That doesn't go with that gobi. That's never gone together. As much as I love the dish and elements of it, I think right now is not the right time. So for me, sadly, it's a no. I see a lot of skill in this dish. So feel good about it. Don't stop cooking. And take all of this knowledge that you've got today and keep going.
disappointed. I might have jumped the gun on taking this opportunity right now. I think I need to grow as a chef and also as a person and try again later on in life. Maybe after just not right now. Two and three years after the finish the college. After maybe getting a degree. bright as long as we have young kids like that at 18 year old cooking things are great Absolutely. she has all the makings and she's just not ready for this competition no what do you think they look good or no uh, they need a little bit more time to cook they're getting there though hey go on, hey. looking good my name is Anaí Gonzalez. I'm 25 years old from Dallas, Texas, and I'm a legal assistant. Ah. My go-to style, comfort foods, but I try to add a Latin twist to it. Hey. Being a first-generation Mexican-American influences my cooking, but I also don't want to keep it too traditional. I want to show the world that Mexican food can also be quite elegant and very delicious. You got this, Anaí. How are you? What are you making? So I'm frying some rice first. I'm going to make a flank steak filled chile relleno. So there's many different ways to make a chile relleno. You can kind of cook it whole, batter it. How is your chile relleno going to be different from the traditional battered one? I like to stick to my roots, but I also like to give it that first generation Mexican-American flair. So I'm not deep frying it. So where does your passion as a young lady, do you work? So I actually um, quit my job to be on the show. You quit your job to come here? I know, right? Great. <laughs> That's pretty ballsy. Yeah. But I'm in the kitchen, and that's my passion. That's my dream. All right. Good luck. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. What I am most concerned about is my steak, medium rare is hit or miss. When I did turn it over, I may have missed it by one minute. So it's potentially a little bit over. It was definitely nerve wracking because I don't have anything to fall back on. And if I end up leaving tonight, I go back to nothing, and I'll just have to start from scratch. Yes. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Hey. I just hope this dish is enough to get me my apron. Why don't you tell us your name and what you've cooked for us? My name is Anaí Gonzalez. I am from Dallas, Texas. And what we have here on the plate is a flank steak chile relleno on a bed of arroz pinto and a tomato sauce covered in Oaxaca melted cheese with the Mexican crema. And what do you do for a living? Um, I was used to be employed as a legal assistant, but then I quit my job. I decided, you know, it wasn't where my passion was. Let me get this straight. You quit your job to come here? Listen, I'm a big believer in taking a minute to yourself and saying, am I doing what's right? Exactly. Good motivation. Should we have a yeah, taste? Shall we? Let's taste it. Looks delicious. Young lady, it's restaurant quality. Let's get that absolutely clear. I love the finesse. Great choice of plates. I think the presentation is so inviting. Let's hope all the flavors deliver. Curtis, we do the honors. Hopefully it's cooked right. That steak's cooked very, very nicely. It is medium rare. And why medium rare? I personally am a big fan of medium rare. It keeps the juiciness of the steak. Mm. You know, when I see chili relleno, I'm always in love with the idea of it, but I never really love to eat it. And this, you really taste the pepper, you really taste the beef. It's a good dish. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, I think the execution and your interpretation of this classic speaks to your background. All the traditional components, but that sort of glitz and glamour from Dallas is there as well, which I kind of really dig. Um, for me, I'm not a fan of the sauce. You could have put chipotle in there, roasted some garlic, and really made that, that red sauce a little bit more vibrant. Did you slice the flank steak? I did slice yeah. the steak. Just be careful, because when you expose meat like that, it needs seasoning. Yeah, sure. Um, the dish is good, but this is the season of legends, and you need to be very good. So, as you know, you need three S's to get the apron. Gordon. Uh, whew, that's a tough one. I love what you've done with the steak. It's cooked beautifully. It needs more seasoning, big deal. We can fix that. Restaurant quality plating, that's a big one for me. I'm a yes. Uh, well, there's a couple of things that I would change. I'm going to give you a yes. It's two yeses. You need three yeses to pass. Aron Sanchez. Yeah, you know, for me, it's like, 
I have a, a responsibility and obligation to continue to promote Mexican food and make sure that it, it has the right appreciation and respect. And with what you put forward, you might not have a job, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you definitely have an apron. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. This right here is something special, something coveted, and I know you're gonna do justice to it. Definitely, I will not disappoint. <laughs> Mine is a yes too. I'll have another if you have time to cook one. This definitely. is delicious. Definitely, I'll go back right now. <laughs> job to follow my dreams and honestly it was the scariest thing I ever did but winning this apron means that I'm capable of so much more. That's exciting to see this new generation of cooks coming through. Right definitely rest in quality right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I got the skills I can whip it up in the kitchen. <laughs> Next time the MasterChef kitchen this is it the final night of auditions welcomes a culinary queen. Please welcome Paula <laughs> Dean. I love me some Paula Dean. With just five aprons remaining. It was perfectly delicious. <laughs> the battle is on. The competition's rife. And you come in with a burger. For one of the last spots, this is it. We're down to our final apron ah! in the MasterChef kitchen. Woo! Can I get that body under my husband's head? <laughs> <laughs>